Thank you, Barry. And good morning. What, what a perfect song for us to begin thinking about imagination. Somewhere over the rainbow. Yay. Good morning. My name is Kay Brilliant. I am prayer chaplain here at Unity of Las Cruces, and we welcome you to our Sunday morning celebration service. Unity of Las Cruces is where we know that God is good all the time and all are welcome, safe, and loved. Please silence your cell phones if you haven't done so by now. And I want to remind you that we have materials at our table right here near the door. Um, uh, any kind of written materials that you want. If you have a need for something that you want to read or some guidance, please see one of us. Uh, there isn't much that Unity hasn't written about over the last century, so uh, I'm sure we can find something to meet your needs in case there's some particular item to learn about. So just let us know. We'll do our best to try and find materials for you. Unity and its origin communicated through, through written materials. and. Um, to support prayer and healing, which was the base for unity practice. <coughs> Excuse me. In addition to the materials, there's prayer box, and you'll find nearby you somewhere is a little clipboard, and if you have a special request or a need for a particular kind of prayer or someone that you want to put on our prayer list, please feel free to fill that in, put it in the prayer box or in the offering bag as it comes by. Um, we hold those for a week and pray, and then we send them forward to Unity Headquarters for a full month, 24 hours a day. It's a lot of energy, and it works, and we are blessed. Unity is a positive, practical approach to Christianity based on the teachings of Jesus the Christ and the power of prayer. Unity honors the universal truths in all religions and respects each individual's right to choose a spiritual path. And we also believe in standing and singing, so let's do that. And our author will be accompanying us. Yay. Thank you, Doug. There's a little fountain of peace in my heart, in my heart. There's a little fountain of peace in my heart. A water so sweet to taste may live my life a little more grace, make the world a little happier place. In my heart There's a little fountain of peace In your heart In your heart There's a little fountain of peace In your heart That little fountain of peace its water shall never cease If you tend it, it will increase In your heart Maybe someday The little fountain will overflow And spill its shimmering waters On the soul dust world we know a fountain in my heart a stream in my neighborhood a river running through this land an ocean all around the world oh there's a little fountain of peace in my heart in my there's a little fountain of peace in my heart. 
water so sweet to taste May live my life a little more grace Make the world a little happier place In my heart Thank you. It's so much fun to sing one of Doug's songs when he's here. Yes. And let us get still and please join me in an opening prayer. Mother, Father, God, we gather this morning in great gratitude for all that is. We are blessed to have the music, hear the words, find the guidance, remember the truth, practice what we know to be true. With this and so much more, we give gratitude, love, harmony, faith to all in the world. And so it is. Amen. Speaking of the world, right next to Doug is the world. And um, we've started to practice, there you go, of, of blessing the world. It's a symbol. We don't do a lot of rituals in our church. But it's a symbol of remembering to bless the world. Remember we talked about energy last week, and that energy is so powerful. And just going through the symbolism of putting your hands on the world and blessing it is powerful in and of itself. So thank you for remembering to do that. Let's have the lighting of the Christ candle. I am now in the presence of pure being and immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. I acknowledge thy presence and thy power, O blessed Spirit. In thy divine wisdom, now erase my mortal limitations, and from thy pure substance of love, bring into manifestation my world according to thy perfect law. And so it is. Amen. And this morning's spiritual reading, we're glad to have Reverend Jennifer back from her adventure in Kansas City at the headquarters. Jennifer. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Kay. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. To you, love God. Transform to you. Listening is harnessing both mind and the emotions to share the same space as the soul of the one speaking. To hear is to register what is being said, even if the mind is engaged elsewhere. To listen is to absorb the full impact of what is being spoken. Listening requires engaging both your mind and emotions. Your mind can be likened to the closed captioning that scrolls along the bottom of the television screen. However, unlike closed captions that repeat verbatim what is being said, your mind flashes observations, judgments, commentary, to-do lists, and more, even while you're supposedly listening to someone speak. To master the art of listening, transform the inner commentary that scrolls along the screen of your mind into a paraphrase of what the other person is saying. This will ensure you know what was said. Then engage your heart. Do your best to feel as the speaker is feeling. This will ensure you have compassion for what is being said. Everyone deserves to be listened to, not just heard listened to love God thank you Jennifer I can't help but giggle as she's going through the 
what you do, what you're really doing when you're sitting quietly. And I love the list making. You know, I'm thinking, oh, on the way home, I could stop and get my, you know. But to paraphrase, practice spiritual listening. Is that close? All right. We have good news. You may have seen this. This is a story that took place. Um, these dogs are hunting dogs, and they were on a fox hunt when they saw a deer, and the deer went into the lake. Dogs go into the lake. Picture it. 36 or something like that of them. 38. And guess what? No deer. And there they are out in the middle of the lake, dog paddling. And they're not going to get back to shore. That's not their instinct, according to the, the article that accompanies this. So these uh, fisher people were out in their boat, and they saw this and began going around and picking up these dogs and taking them to the shore. Because the owners of the dogs are over on the shore. I'm undoubtedly, can you see it? Shouting and, come on, Rover. Anyhow, it took them like four trips to get all 38 dogs. And uh, some of them were so worn out that they actually had to hold their heads above the water before they got them into the boat. Because that's not the natural place for a dog for long term. Some of them had been in the water, they think, up to an hour. Which is a long time. So we are grateful to those fisher guys and to Spirit for having helped discover them and rescue them. So there's a puppy story for you. And we say thank you, God. It's a great picture. And it is. Full of dogs. The, and they had so many, they, had, they couldn't get them all in at once. I just have a picture in my head of what that, and especially what it sounded like. And we are grateful, so let's spend a second with some gratitude. We are grateful for all of you who attend. No matter how you do it, whether you're on Zoom or YouTube later, we appreciate you. And of course, those of us who are here today in person, all of us who participate in whatever way to make our unity of Las Cruces a wonderful place to be knowing the truth. We have our book study group, our word, daily word on Wednesday morning, and prayer time on Wednesday evening. All that participation is recognized, loved, and appreciated. We're thankful for the many folks behind the scenes that support the ministry, especially for Sunday mornings, but also during the week. Our technical support, our prayer chaplains, our board of trustees, our... Um, <coughs> excuse me, social media person, and our daily word readers. And Dave is on vacation, so we hold him in prayer as he enjoys his time away. And Larry will be giving the daily word today. And we appreciate Dorothy for being the smiling door opener this morning. We appreciate that. And our music director, Barry Shaw, and the wonderful musical artists he finds and brings and good morning, Doug, who will be doing our special music today. For all of this and so much more, we say thank you and we are filled with joy. And speaking of the daily word, Larry, will you come up and have the daily word with us today? So, come on up. So while Larry's making his way up, you know there's nothing magic about what I do, or what Dave does, or what Larry does. So those of you who will be willing to help us, we're looking for more platform assistance. And we'll be doing some training later on in the summer. And if you're interested in being a prayer chaplain, we can do that as well. And at any time that you want to read the spiritual reading or do the daily word, if you will just let us know, we'd be more than glad to find a spot. There's always room for more. And thank you, Larry. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Unity friends. Today's word is generous. I honor the divinity in others through my generosity. There have been times when I relied on the generosity of others. I remember feeling grateful 
when they shared what they had what they had with open hearts, not thinking of how I might repay their kindness. This is the true gift of generosity, not just the material offered or the services rendered, but the feeling I am worthy of someone's time, treasure, and effort. This love and compassion is at the heart of my generous impulses too. I give not out of pity or even out of obligation or duty, but so others may know their worthiness through me. Each person is a divine being, yes, made in the image and likeness of God. I honor each person's divinity by doing what I can to help and support them, as others have helped and supported me. And today's scripture is, those who are generous are blessed, for they share their bread with the poor. Proverbs 22, verse 9. Would you all repeat this with me? I the, honor the divinity and others, others through my generosity. generosity. And thank you. Have a good day. Thank, thank you, Mary. See? Everybody has a chance to help us out. Thank you, Larry. We appreciate that. Uh, we have to stand and sing again because it's time to do that. This is part of our spiritual aerobics. practicing that smiling. <laughs> Please join me in today's affirm affirmation. Together, the dynamic energy of spirit is constantly at work in my life. And so it is. Please, Please join me in welcoming Reverend Jennifer back, and we're eager to hear about your trip. Thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. And I was going to do this at the end. One of the things I heard at a conference was someone who said, um, um, things can be, oh, now it's left me. It will return. It will return when I talk about Reverend Paulette. Uh, however, I brought souvenirs for everybody. So if Kay would help me. Um, if you all will take one booklet and one magnet. It's a booklet and a magnet with the prayer for protection. And I'm going to give this one to Ken.
presence, presence. So we're talking about imagination this month, and um, I think my talk title was something about a two-edged sword, and well, that went out the window uh, because Spirit gave me something else to talk about with my trip to Kansas City, and I wanted to share that with all of you. Um, and this way, I can tell you all about my trip as part of my talk, and then I don't have to talk. I don't have to repeat the story 15 times, because it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. And um, I did go to Kansas City. It was the first time I'd gone to Kansas City. It's the first time I've been to a ministers' conference. It's the first time I took the train. And it was the first time I went to Unity Village. A lot of firsts for me. And we're talking about imagination and the power of imagination and how to use imagination to make things be what you want it to be. And I didn't listen to myself at all. I was moving into this experience of a lot of things I hadn't done before. And I did not take the time to use my imagination to set in motion how I wanted it to be. It was a fabulous, wonderful experience. However, it would have been better if I would have taken the time and used my power of imagination. I have the tendency um, to just bull through when I've got to do something I haven't done before, just, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, right? However, if I would have used the power of my imagination, I think some things would have gone smoother. Um, and that was a lesson that I learned. That was a lesson that I learned there. And so I have some slides from my trip. Um, pictures that I took. All right. And this was for the 2024, the mystical journey of wholeness. Mystical journey of wholeness. So on my first day, did I imagine meeting new friends? I did not. But my first day, I pulled into the parking lot in Building 200 where I was supposed to be. I walked into the door. I was expecting a bunch of people and a registration table, nothing. There was nobody. And so I took the elevator up to the second floor where Unity offices were. It was like, still nobody. Came back down. There were some other doors on my left, but that just didn't seem like that's where I was supposed to go. So I came back out front. And that's where I met Reverend Shauna, my new best friend. <laughs> So I said, oh, this is a person. I said, are you here for the conference? She said, yes. I said, great, I'm lost. She said, so am I. <laughs> and so we went back into the building. I said, well, I went up there and I went up the second floor. She said, well, let's go through these doors, the doors I didn't want to go through. And it ended up, we took the back way into the place where the registration was being held. And so Reverend Shauna and I were like, yay, we figured this out. And we got registered and we got our little bag. And then, the next slide, Ken. We were meandering around in the area there and we saw another person standing around looking like she was lost. And Shauna went up to her and said, are you an orphan? And she said, I think so. She said, we're collecting those. Come on, you can join us. We'll be the three orphans. So Reverend Marsha McCartney, and uh, she joined us. And we had a lovely time uh, together uh, experiencing the retreat. Uh, the next one. So this was Touching the Stillness Retreat. Imagine having a spiritual experience. This was... Uh, facilitated by Reverend Paulette Pipe. Reverend Paulette 
was the keeper of the flame for the Unity Worldwide uh, Board of Trustees for several years. And last year, she got the Myrtle Fillmore um, Award. And um, her website is, uh, and her business is touching the stillness. I really appreciate that Unity Worldwide Ministries made this retreat part of the conference on the first day. It brought everybody in. It was a experience of meditation, stillness, calmness, humor, and being a little uncomfortable. That's what Reverend Paulette says. I am going, everything's time to the minute and everybody knows what to do. However, it's subject to change by spirit. So I'm using that as part of my um, future talk. So I may say this is what the talk is, but subject to change by spirit, it could be something different. Reverend Paulette gave a guided us through a wonderful meditation. I had a great experience sharing with Russell, who's on the board of trustees. Uh, she had us do some movement meditation with dancing. Uh, I had the great experience and recognition to know I am not comfortable in my own body. And it does not like to do that kind of stuff. I was just like, OK, when is this going to stop? And then they changed the music. and. Huh, and you'd have to move. You can't just stay in the same spot. She made us move around the room. It was. <laughs> it was a wonderful time. At the end of the day, she finished up with a ritual where we went back into the atrium chapel, and uh, before going in, um, other other. Uh, chaplains were there and they washed our hands with warm water and blessed us and then we went into the room and sat down and then she had us do a ritual with some oil and you pair up and anoint the other person with your blessing blessing their sacredness and they bless yours and I was in the front row and uh, my two friends were somewhere else and I didn't have anybody to do that with. So I just took my little bottle and was starting to put it on myself. And Reverend Paulette came down. And she did the ritual with me. That was so touching. That was so touching. So that was a wonderful spiritual experience. And that was on day one. And I will tell you that... It was such an energetic day. And when I got back to my hotel, I crashed. I crashed. I just I went to bed at 8 and woke up the next morning. And it was really, I was so surprised at what so much was released and so much was absorbed. She talked to us about writing love letters to ourselves for 40 days, and she had us do that, part of that, that also. And then, like I said, the meditation, and then at the end, the uh, ritual was just the perfect ending to that. Um, I in, invite you to check out her website. She's got a lot of, she said, meditation is her jam, and that's what she does. So that was a wonderful piece, and I'm so grateful for Unity Worldwide Ministries to add, adding that as part of the conference. Next slide. So uh, lunch with friends and new acquaintances. So on lunch of the first day when we took a break from the retreat, I went over to the uh, lunch area with my friend Shauna, but we got separated in the line, and I found Reverend Jane Hyatt, Wyatt, and Reverend Jane is um, the minister at Unity in Oregon, and I've taken several classes from her. So it was wonderful, and she invited me to sit at her table. And I was keeping an eye out for 
um, Shauna, but she had gone to sit at another table. And also at our table was Reverend Doris Hoskins, and she is the, um, she just came off of the board. She was chairman of the board of trustees uh, in 2023. And they had a wonderful discussion about um, the field ministry program, and they were talking about um, uh, the um, special dispensation program and those kind of things. And I got some real good information from both of them about a direction uh, for me uh, when I move into the program later this year. Um, so I was grateful to be able to spend time with both of these ladies. I admire them very, very much. Reverend uh, Doris has a church in Colorado, and um, Reverend Jane, uh, I keep in touch with her on emails and stuff, and she always, on the bottom of her emails, always puts what books she's reading. It's great. It's like, oh, I can check that one out. So imagine lunch with friends and new acquaintances. I, I didn't put that into my work before I got ready for conference, so now I know these things to check and do next time. So thank you. Next. On day two, um, I didn't participate in the first thing they did in the morning, and what I did is I was uh, another woman I met the first day was Reverend Sandy Boyer. She's the minister at Unity in Hagerston, Maryland. And fun thing. When I was talking with Sandy, I told her I'm from Las Cruces. She said, oh, one of my members used to be in Las Cruces. She said, B.G. Miller. I was like, I know B.G. It was so neat. And uh, Jennifer Burke. Burke, thank you very much. Jennifer Burke had been visiting B.G. right before a conference, so Sandy knew Jennifer too. And I was like, well, that is cool. It's not like I know everybody in Unity in Las Cruces, but the one person that's in Hagerston, Maryland, I know her. So that was really neat. And so Sandy and I decided we were going to get together on day two at lunch and, and talk more. And so um, as it turns out, when I got to Unity Village the second day, I decided to go t to the labyrinth. And Sandy was there. And she was walking ahead of me. And um, imagine walking the largest labyrinth in the United States with a new friend. And I will tell you, when I stepped into the beginning of that labyrinth, I had such an emotion in my heart. I, the spirit was with me. And I started walking, and I was walking kind of fast. <laughs> I was walking kind of fast. It really wasn't a meditative walk until I gotten right behind somebody else, and so I had to slow down. It's either that or pass them, and that just seemed rude. <laughs> so it was a wonderful experience, and it is a wonderful sight just to see the labyrinth. Um, and... <laughs> To, it is truly meditative. And so I invite you all to um, think about visiting Unity Village, if nothing else, for the labyrinth. Um, it is uh, the work they did, how they've got it set up. There are benches in the middle for you to sit and, and contemplate and meditate. There are benches on the outside. It's really very, very beautiful. And so I was uh, grateful to have that experience and with a new friend. Next. And then after the lunch, I went to the archives, the Unity Archives. Um, and when you, right now, when you enter the archives, the first thing you come into, I don't know if you all were aware, Centers for Spiritual Living have taken their religious science archives from Golden, Colorado. Unity Village, Unity Archives has offered to keep their archives in there with at Unity Village. And so uh, 
four or six weeks ago, I think, the truck that was carrying all of the archives arrived at Unity Village. And so at the beginning, when you walk in to the archives, there's a little display, and there's a picture of Ernest Holmes and, and the Science of Mind book and some of the pieces of their archive collection. Uh, there were old uh, issues of We Wisdom and uh, Unity Magazine and the Daily Word, um, some writings of Charles when he dedicated Unity Village and put a blessing on it. And I just thought it was so great. There were two offices, and it said Charles Fillmore's office and Myrtle Fillmore's office. And um, it was so beautiful to see how they have captured those pieces of history and those treasures on paper. Um, digitally is lovely, but to see the paper and see the original writing and the original handwriting and some of the old pictures, it was just wonderful. It was so wonderful. And one of the ladies that I met at lunch was spending her entire conference in the archives. She was from Canada and she was doing research on the history of unity in Canada. So uh, that was <clears throat> um, really interesting to listen to her and the work that she was doing about that. Uh, the next one. And then the rest of the campus, the Fillmore Cafe, the tower, the beautiful gardens, um, the fountains, the, the, um, the garden of prayer with the stations for each of the 12 powers. That's so beautiful. And then on the last day, uh, one of my uh, workshops was a guided meditation in Mel Myrtle Fillmore's Grove. And that's the picture on the right. It is beautiful trees and benches around. And the person who was supposed to do the guided meditation didn't come, but we just did our own meditation. It was so wonderful. What a beautiful experience to really close that out for me. And um, is that the last picture? Yes. I couldn't have imagined these things. However, the power of my imagination would have brought even deeper experience, which I probably even wouldn't have been able to go through. Maybe that's why I didn't do it. This was very, very spiritual and emotional for me, and I am so grateful that you all supported me in making this trip to conference. Um, if you've been to a business conference, it's different, you know? The energy is different. I had a wonderful conversation with um, Denise Rossier, who is the Unity musician, official musician. Uh, she's in Colorado Springs. She's got beautiful music. Uh, we went to a, a little workshop, and she talked about how, the importance of music in your service. Um, I talked to a wonderful woman from Empower about the music, and that's one of the things, Barry and Doug, I want to say that I got from a uh, conference also was I recognize how important music is to me as well. I love singing with you all and, and making sure it's part of our service, and um, I also treasure the feelings that music brings to my life and that I don't listen to music enough. I listen to books and that kind of stuff. I don't listen to music enough, except for on Sunday or really Sundays. 
So uh, I need to bring that more into my life. I want to uh, close by saying that I encourage you not to move into a completely foreign experience and not use your power of imagination just because you don't have any idea what it's going to be like. Because that's where your power of imagination comes into play. That allows you to put into motion the energy so that you know what that experience is going to look like and be like for you. So use that power of imagination. And sometimes we get all caught up with planning and preparing for this new experience and forget about those things. And that's why the practice is so important. Because it reminds us, oh, that's right, I've got to do this work before I go to make sure that I have the best experience for myself and others. So I encourage you to do that. And thank you again for allowing me to share this with you. That was so much what I wanted to do as well, because it was a wonderful spiritual experience, and I met new friends, and I learned a lot of things, and I also recognize how important each and every one of you and Unity of Las Cruces is to me. Thank you very much. And I invite you to close your eyes, settle in your chair, feet on the ground. You are supported by spirit, that divine energy. What a beautiful experience, feeling that divine loving energy circulating throughout your entire body. Being awareness of your breath. That life giving breath. Filled with light and love. And that light energy circulates throughout your whole body, touches every cell in every organ, all the tissues, the muscles, the blood the skin. Each piece is God perfection. Feeling that love in your heart. There's any part of your body in discomfort, send that love to that area. Filled with love, remembering its perfection. Those cells and those muscles, those organs remember their perfection and wake up to their perfection. Coming alive, regenerating tissue.
imagine silver sparkles of loving energy circulating through your entire body. From the tips of your toes to the top of your head. shimmering silver godness. Feel it circulating. Knowing your eyes are more clear, your hearing is more keen, your muscles are stronger, bones are stronger. Joints are flexible. Skin is smooth. The awareness of God energy in your body, every atom, always. Regenerating perfection, wholeness, perfect health. Breathe into that perfect health. Now, as we bring our awareness back into this space, the noise from outside the building comes into our awareness. The air in the room on our skin. Feel our feet on the floor, our back against the chair. You can wiggle your fingers. Shrug your shoulders. When you are ready, open your eyes. Thank you, Barry, and our special music, Doug Adams.
Well, with a theme like Imagine, for somebody of my generation, there's pretty much one song that you uh, go to. <laughs> Imagine there's no heaven It's easy if you try No hell below us Above us only sky Imagine all the people Living for today Imagine no countries It isn't hard to do Nothing to kill or die for no religion to imagine all the people living life in peace you may say that I'm a dreamer but I'm not the only one I hope someday you'll join us And the world will be as one Imagine the whole possession Wonder if you can No need for greed Or hunger A brotherhood of man Imagine all the people Sharing Say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will be as imagining. Thank you, Doug. Let's see. And Jennifer, thank you for um, sharing with us not just uh, what happened, but how it's impacted you. Um, we look forward to the manifestation of those experiences in unity of Las Cruces, and all of us join you in that joy. We appreciate and love you. And please join me as we affirm our prayer of faith. Together, God is my help in every need. God does my every hunger feed. God dwells within me, guides my way through every moment night and day. I now am wise, I now am true, patient, kind, and loving too. All things I am can do and be through Christ, the truth, 
that is in me. God is my health, I can't be sick. God is my strength, unfailing quick. God is my all, I know no fear, since God and love and truth are here. And all the people said, Amen. Thank you. And our recipient, we are a tithing church, and the recipient for this week's tithes is Unity Worldwide Ministries. And we appreciate them. And if you will join me affirming our prosperity affirmation, divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, all that I receive, and I am grateful. Let us bless these offerings. We know that they are given in love. They are certainly received in love. And they go forward to do the work that is ours to do in unity of Las Cruces and worldwide ministries. We say thank you, God. Amen. Let's see. This week... This week at Unity, on Tuesday we have the book group um, meeting in person at 9.30. Wednesday morning, please join us with the Daily Word. It's just such, <laughs> it's turned out to be quite a thing. 9.30 on Zoom, whatever the Daily Word is in the booklet that day is the work that we do that morning. So if you need any assistance in figuring out how to be with us, we would love to have more uh, people participate on that. If you can't be with us when you open your daily word on Wednesday, remember we're there, we are there with you as well. And then Wednesday evening we have our meditation time that is also on Zoom. Please feel free to join. No, it's not a service, it's just a prayer meditation. And what a good boost that is for everybody during the middle of the week. Please join us then. Friday, we'll be back to office hours. And there'll be meditation here around the noon hour. That, again, is just a time for you to come and go. You can spend an hour. You can spend just a few minutes. But being in the presence with others during a meditative time has great energy. We encourage you to join us. And again, I'm going to say this, during that same time, if you can't physically be here, take a few minutes and get still and know that we're here and join us that way. Energy is um, dominate, so no worries there. And the book group, this, uh, the book that the group is reading to this time is Quantum Body, Deepak Chopra. So please join the group at any point in time. And I believe, unless there are other announcements. Also, this Friday is our board meeting. So if you would like to join us, you can come here Friday at 1.30 or contact us. Uh, we do do it hybrid. So if you want to join us via Zoom, just let us know. Um, and we can send out the Zoom information to you uh, this Friday at 1.30, our June board meeting. It's a good way to stay connected with the work of the church. And I'll say one more time, thank you, Larry. Thank you, Wendy, for joining me last week. Um, all of us are welcome to participate in some way, especially up here. So if you're contemplating uh, a bit more activity that you want to participate in, please see one of us. We're more than glad to welcome you. Come play with us. 
<laughs> and if you will join us as we sing our prayer for protection and the peace song. Did you all sing the peace song while you were there?